Hi and welcome back to Dusting History. I'm sure you've heard of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving and I'm also sure you've heard of Ichabod Crane, the poor guy who gets pursued by the Headless Horseman. But did you know that Ichabod Crane was a real person? I didn't. This is him. He was a commander in the US Army and namesake for the character in Sleepy Hollow. This image is a daguerreotype, which is a very early type of photography, and it's held at the uh, Library of Congress in the US. Now, while the scan size of this image is pretty good, the actual quality of it's pretty rough. There's a lot of blemishes and a lot of scratches and dirt, and I'm actually going to crop in on the image. I'm not going to try and clean the whole thing, because why would I clean those borders? I think this is a perfect opportunity to frame it up a little nicer. Save me painting some scratches. So I'm actually going to start by going into Topaz Photo AI and I'm really trying just to knock out some of that more egregious grain there. You can see it's done a very good job of, of knocking out the grain. It has gone a little hard on his face and I'll actually uh, end up painting back to the original uh, TIFF file to, to restore some of the detail. It gets a little bit spotty. So the first thing I'm going to try here is actually use uh, a patch healing tool and take some of these larger sections away and just find rough parts of the grain of the, of the background that I can reuse and resample. And you can see what it does is it takes the grain and the, and the texture from what's underneath where I slide it to, but sets the luminance to what was originally underneath. And it's a good way just to block out some of the larger patches of loss. It doesn't always work, but you just hunt around and find a good little patch to, uh, to use. Now onto the remove tool and it just becomes a process of zooming right in and removing everything you think is is not part of the original daguerreotype. There are those diagonal scratches right across his face and there's a lot of loss under those and you can see I'm going to take quite a while trying to paint each line out but then having to go back later and try and reintroduce some skin tone under those areas. It's very hard to do this stuff in, in large patches. You've really got to be very, very meticulous and get in with a very fine brush and just go crazy painting spots. So already you can see I've made some inroads. What you find when you start painting in some of these little dots is that you actually get some blurry spots under the remove tool. It doesn't always provide you a good grain back underneath. But what I'm going to do later on at the very, very last uh, moment when I'm finished everything is I'll put a unified grain back over the image and that actually ties a lot of it together. Once all these fine little white dots are gone, you can kind of see the larger blemishes like that uh, very almost vertical gray line straight through the background there. And I'll remove those things later. And they're much easier to remove once all the scratches are gone like that. You can see I just removed it with the um, patch healing tool and then work it, you know, the edges back into the plate with the remove tool again. One of the neat features with the latest build of, of Photoshop is the fact that you can use a remove tool and just draw a lasso and it'll actually remove everything inside of that. Now here I'm going to use a little patch heel tool to try and move some of these larger patches now that I've got some more of the uniform cleaned up. And also using a little clone brush I cloned the top of the button, the top right button with the button underneath it. I've sped this up so much some of that whizzes by pretty quickly but uh, if I don't speed this up, we'll all be watching this for hours and I've already done it once. <laughs> I don't need to do it again.
coming up right now you can sort of see I'm trying to reintroduce the side of his head there I think a lot of that fine white hair there was actually more of a blemish than, than indicative of his hair so I've just with a paintbrush and just some grey paint basically a standard brush I've painted in a few of those areas and indicated a few wispy hairs later on I'm going to put this picture into Remini which is an artificial intelligence uh, program for, for generating sharper faces it uses a, a like a a, a photo database to try and rebuild uh, the, the image and you'll see what that does later on so indicating a little bit more of that hair just roughly helps uh, that AI app make some educated guesses as to what's meant to be there I think I wonder if any of you saw that little Easter egg. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. I did that. I put something in the Statue of Liberty uh, clean up and uh, nobody's noticed or uh, thought to, to ping me about it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> just doing it for fun. So at this point, I'm back to just a standard uh, clone brush, just cloning a bit of the uniform around. I've done a little bit of research into trying to work out exactly how these things work and ended up um, sort of knocking that back a little bit and just painting some of the edges of where I think the fabric would have folded and put, indicating a little bit of shadow and, and light for um, edges of the material. You'll see I'll do that later on his arm. There's a, there's a fair chunk right above the image here where there's a whole ton of stuff missing and I had no option but just to paint a sleeve in by hand. So this next little bit is just guesswork and reference just with the standard brush painting greys tones to try and indicate where the folds of the fabric might be. And then using the smudge tool I'm just smudging the paint around a bit so it's not too obvious. Alright finally into Remini. You can sort of see what it does there. It does a pretty good job of creating a photographic image of what his face should look like. But I always find it's just a little too sharp a little too detailed so taking this into um, Photoshop again I'll put it back over the top of the original and mix it back and probably use about 80% of this 70% something just to to sort of indicate a slightly more photographic face without it looking too kind of creepy so finding a nice happy medium here finding a nice mix point that I think makes it look photographic enough and, and also suit the rest of the image. And there you have it. Only thing to do now is add a tiny bit of film grain and we're done. So that was a pretty quick one today but a lot of fun to do. I hope you enjoyed that, learned something. As usual, I learned a lot <laughs> doing it as well. And it was really nice to have you along. We'll see you next time.